There's an identity crisis going on in the trading world right now, and I wanna make sure you know who you actually are in this space. And it's okay, it's okay whichever person you are right now, it's where we're going that matters. So there's a lot of people who think they're great traders, but they're just good analysts. And I'm gonna break down what the difference is, because once you understand who you are, you're able to actually go over the bridge and become a great trader. So a good analyst is someone who knows technical analysis, you know how to mark up your charts, you know what setups you're looking for, but that's not enough to be a great trader. Now a great trader, a great trader is someone who has the same skill set, if not better, as a good analyst with the technicals, understanding fundamentals, understanding markups and setups, but a great trader also has disciplined risk management, is super, super specific with their trading plan, right? They have higher emotional intelligence. The number one difference is that a great trader actually executes his or her plan consistently over a long period of time. A great trader has a strategy and an approach that they follow religiously and are disciplined in every single step of the approach. I'll go back to the characteristics of a great trader, but first, let's talk about the sniper. Let's talk about the IG, Instagram, YouTube, sniper. Now, the sniper, you know this trader. You might be this trader. Uh, this is the person who is on the charts 24 seven, posting your screenshots of your entries, the profits, whether they're real or not, who will ever know? Oh, we're up, we're up, we're up, we're up, we're up. Um, what the fuck? Why did he say I'm down five grand? You know, this is that person. This is the trader that's constantly on the charts, all day, every day. Can't have a meal in peace because there's a setup, they're managing their trade, they're over leveraged, whatever it might be. This might be your ex because you couldn't compete with his mistress, US 30. This is the trader that's obsessed with back testing, entries, exits, constantly searching for a new strategy, a slightly better edge. Now I'm not saying some of these behaviors are bad. Obsession accelerates the process 100%. You need to get those reps in. In my journey, I was so obsessed my first 18 months. I'm talking, I was averaging three to four hours of sleep for 18 months straight. So yes, you do have to get those reps in. You wanna build the experience. You wanna create your profitable trading system. This is not negotiable. However, however, eventually you realize the technicals aren't actually your bottleneck. Your technical analysis, everything that you're seeing on the charts, that's not the reason you're not getting the results that you want. At some point, you'll realize you have everything that you need to have a profitable trading system, but there's something missing for that to be realized. There's this thing known as the 10,000 hour rule, right? Now this was popularized by Malcolm Gladwell. And basically what this means is when you put 10,000 hours of intentional execution, learning, progress towards a skill set, that would make you an expert in that field. He says deliberate practice specifically. The thing is, you don't need 10,000 hours of chart time to have a profitable trading system. If you're putting in two hours a day, on average, it would take you almost 14 years to hit those 10,000 hours. Even if it's four hours a day, you're still not doing that until you're almost at year seven. So if it's not the 10,000 hour rule that you need to be profitable, what is it? Trading results, they don't reflect the strategy. It's a reflection of who you are most of the time. It's a reflection of how consistently you execute your trading system to a T. So the question is, how do I bridge the gap from my analysis to actually executing the entire trading system perfectly the grand majority of the time? This comes down to understanding your behavior behaviors, understanding what triggers them. Yes, I know, it's the obvious answer. The psychology, the mindset, self-awareness, doing the inner work. So you probably already know this. The 
problem is you're not focusing on this. We've heard it a million different ways, right? Trading psychology is 80% of the game, right? It's, it's the grand reason that people are successful or they're not in the trading world. It's just like how they say, you know, a great body is built in the kitchen. The body going breakfast, egg whites. I'll be honest with you, tastes like shit. <laughs> Yet, we just focus on the gym. Hey, wait, baby! Uh, oh yeah. Uh -huh. A great trader is built in their trading journal, not on the charts. So if we all agree on this idea that success in this space is mostly based on your psychology, your minds, and your behaviors, how come we're putting 95% of our time onto the charts? If trading success is mostly psychological, how come we neglect it? We spend all this time analyzing the markets instead of analyzing ourselves. How much time do you spend reviewing your trades? How do you review your trades? Do you document the before, the during, the after of the process? Regardless of the outcome, are you tracking the emotions that you felt during that? There are patterns in our behaviors just like there's patterns in the market. What makes chart patterns important isn't the patterns themselves, it's the narrative behind those patterns, right? So what triggers the patterns? What incentivizes these patterns? Understanding the patterns is the root of the cause. So we have to do the same thing with ourselves. So if you're just starting off, start by learning and building your emotional intelligence alongside the technical analysis. If you've been trading for some time now and you consider yourself a good analyst, you have a good understanding of the technicals, it's time to transfer some of that time into self-awareness, into documentation, into making the right adjustments. Find the root of why you're impatient now, why you feel like you need to have X amount of results by now. Who are you trying to prove yourself to? Where does the fear, uncertainty, and doubt really come from? Oftentimes, we, we kind of just glance over these ideas and we don't really dig. And just like the story of the three foot rule, right? The three feet away from gold. Have you ever heard of that story? In, in um, Think You Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, there's a story where they're looking and they're searching for gold and they're digging, they're digging, they're digging. And they just decide to finally give up. And they go and they sell their shovel. Someone buys it, goes back to the same hole. They were three feet away from gold. And what happens was they were on the right path. They were on the right direction, but they didn't stay in the game long enough. They didn't put the intentional intensity driven work for a long enough time, but someone else did. So don't make the same mistake. You might be digging for the right answers. You might be so close to getting that breakthrough, but you just need to dig a little bit further. So it might not be abundantly obvious of why you behave in a certain way, why we do the things that we do. But if we just dig a little deeper, if we question ourselves a little further, if we take some time to just really ponder, you can get to those answers. And a lot of that is really hidden in the past, in the traumas and the things that you've gone through. I'll be making separate videos later on how to unpack some of these things, how to reprogram our subconscious mind. But for now, I at least wanted to create some groundwork for us to build up. The main difference between a good analyst and a great trader is how well they execute their plan over time. A good analyst might go on a nice little streak, you know, a week or two of doing the right things, but eventually these old behaviors, these impulses, the greed, the impatience, sabotage. A great trader knows you're not a reflection of one trade, but a series of trades. You need to build enough data, enough evidence to really find out if it is your strategy, if you do need to change something. Oftentimes, we either think our strategy is way better than it really is because we're super zoomed in, or we think it's worse than it really is and it's because we haven't given ourselves enough trades to even take. It's all about the discipline. I'll give you an example. You can give two traders the exact same strategy, the exact same exits, entries, risk percentages, every single aspect of the strategy can be identical, but the results can be night and day. So much can happen from the moment of execution to the end of that trade. Position sizes. 
trade management, lot sizes, when you move your stop loss to break even, when you don't decide to do that, right? At getting out early, getting stopped out, entering again. So it can be one setup, but a million different outcomes, even though the plan was the exact same. But did you actually do it? Even though we know the plan, we can deviate from. It. There's a lot that we have to rewire from a subconscious and emotional standpoint. If you feel like you're the same person you were when you started something like this, then obviously there's a lot to grow up. And look, it's not your fault. You know, we're, we're raised in a way that honestly makes it way worse for us to be traders. We're, we're raised to be afraid of risk. We're raised and developed to be impulsive. So there's so much that we need to change and that's okay. But this is the required work. You can't avoid this. As much as it might suck to go back and see why, why do I suck in so many different ways? But if you do not face these things, you can't get better, you can't get rid of it. I hear this all the time where say, you have to be emotionless in the market. You have to be like a robot, but that's not true. Your emotions are not gonna go away. That's what makes you a human being. But how good, how talented, how much control we have over those emotions, that is in our power. And that's what we're gonna be working on. We're gonna be working on the hard work. Great traders are the ones that focus and execute their plan the majority of the time for a long period of time. Trading is delicate, it's fragile. So sometimes one mistake can blow everything up. I mean, it's important to note that being a great trader, it doesn't mean you don't lose. It just means you're really good at losing the right way. Losses are a natural part of trading, but a great trader knows that longevity is the key. Longevity is what we're looking to do. Right? Capital preservation, stay in the game, stay detached to the outcomes of losses and wins. Know that your overall plan, it has a random distribution model. Like it's just gonna spit out in a sequence that we have no idea how it's going to come. But you do have to trust. You do have to have confidence. Confidence comes from confide, right? To trust in yourself. So you have to have that in order for this to work. But if you haven't figured out the internal things, you know, the things that trigger certain emotions, behaviors, and actions, you can be the greatest analyst in the world. You can be right nine out of 10 times, but the one time you're wrong, you can't handle it and it blows up. And I speak from personal experience, guys. A great trader can be compared to legendary boxers. It takes calculated hits in order to continue fighting and stays in the ring long enough to get the perfect opportunity, the perfect opportunity to land that knockout punch. So guys, take the small hits long enough for you to be able to deliver the big one, right? For you to be able to really execute the one that gives you the risk or reward that you've been looking for. But there's a difference. Unlike boxing, this isn't 12 rounds. This is an infinite game. An infinite game requires an infinite mindset. Trade disciplined, trade to last, enjoy the infinite game.